maybe. <laughs> there we go. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get what started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hey, it's great to see you. Good morning. I know. T today's Groundhog Day. It is. Yes. So did he did he see himself or a shadow or, or what, what's going on with that? Oh. So we were talking on a team meeting and apparently this groundhog is only accurate 34% of the time. If I were only accurate 30% of the time, I'd be fired. So maybe it's time to look for a new mascot for Groundhog Day. Yeah, well, I was hoping he wouldn't <laughs> see a shadow so we can, uh, so we, we can off. have six more weeks of COVID. That's, 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 where's the COVID uh, groundhog? Six more weeks of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So uh, today we have two awesome guests here to discuss a very, very, very impactful story uh, about what it means to wear this uniform and hopefully it reminds everyone not to take the freedoms we have in this great nation for granted. So Julie, please introduce today's guest. That's right, Chief. One family has made nearly unprecedented sacrifices for our nation since the country went to war after 9-11. The Wise Brothers from Arkansas had a deep devotion to selfless service. All three brothers, Jeremy, Ben, and Bo Wise, were called to serve. But incredible tragedy struck not once but twice. Jeremy, a former Navy SEAL, was killed in Afghanistan in 2009 while working with the CIA. And just two years later, Ben, a Green Beret, was fatally wounded in Afghanistan. The loss of his brothers made Bo, a Marine who is also serving, a sole survivor of the war. Bo is here with co-author Tom Saleo to discuss his memoir, Three Wise Men, which tells the story of his family's legacy. Please help us welcome Bo and Tom to Chief Chat. Hey. Good morning. Thank you Good for having morning. us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Excellent. Thanks for for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. You know what to do. Share your questions and comments with Bo in the comment section. We'll read those live. Um, now is a great time to start your watch party to enjoy this interview with your friends. And if you're not following our page, you should. Chief Chats are every week and we have great guests lined up. Following us lets you know who's coming up next. Awesome. So uh, Bo and Tom, welcome to Chief Chat. Chief, thank you for having us. Man. Thank you, Chief. Oh, no worries. No worries. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you. And then, uh, Bo, of course, uh, I can't I can't uh, let you let you slide uh, because I, me as a former Marine, I got to show my, my, my brother uh, some, right. some love. So, hurrah to, to you and, and, uh, and, and all the awesome things that you're doing. Hey, Semper Fi, Chief. Thanks. Awesome. So uh, can you tell us where you're calling us from today? Uh, just north of uh, Oklahoma City, you know, a little town called Guthrie. Yeah, and I'm in Delray Beach, Florida, which is uh, in between West Palm Beach and Fort Lauderdale. Oh man, well, Sorry. Would, you say, would you say Julie? Would you say Julie? Somebody got the the raw end of that stick, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bo. <No. laughs> hey, we can't all be in Florida, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, Bo, thank you for being here to discuss Three Wise Men, which was released in January. It is an incredibly powerful memoir. Your family, going back to your great uncles, your, your grandparents, had such strong ties to the military. So tell us about growing up in Arkansas and learning about your family's rich military history. Yeah, you know, one of the ones that I was uh, most fascinated with was uh, my great uncle Darwin. He was a Marine Raider. So that, I mean, you know, once you get to the Marine Corps, you, you know, you hear the term Raider and maybe you've seen a TV show or radio, but when you, you, you know, Marine Corps, as Chief can tell you, is really, really big on history and tradition. So like when I went to boot camp, you know, they're constantly, you know, drilling, you know, on like the Frozen Chosen and Operation Phantom Fury and all that. So, um, so knowing the Raiders, like the Pacific, like the Raider campaign in the Pacific, that was uh, huge mm -hmm. for me. And then uh, the first in my generation to go was uh, my first cousin, Nathan. And um, so, you know, Marine legacy continued a little long in, uh, in our generation. I wasn't the first to go and there. There's kind of a lot of things, but I, I, probably, then, I think as a whole, the Marine Corps is the best branch of service. Hoorah. And right. your mom used to, she used to read you like military history stories at, at bedtime, the, the three of you. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 you know, all the time it was, uh, she was obsessed with World War II. She's quite a history buff. 
And so, you know, Patton uh, versus Rommel and stuff like that, you know, we heard about a lot of that from an early age. And, uh, but World War II is a, was a big one uh, because there was, you know, uh, so much family involvement in World War II, but a little bit of everything. Hey, can I ask, um, did, you, uh, did you go to San Diego for uh, boot camp? Is that? No, I, so I enlisted out of Virginia. I was living with uh, Jeremy. So as you know, Chief, you know, west of the Mississippi goes to San Diego. Absolutely. Goes to the east of the Mississippi goes to Paris Island. So I went to Paris Island, uh, Lejeune, and Geiger for SOI and all of that. Oh, east coast, yeah. west coast. Well, I was hoping you was going to be a Hollywood Hollywood Marine like I was. I didn't get to go to a Padres <laughs> game for boot camp. <laughs> awesome. Bo, so your family um, clearly has a rich history with the military. Um, was that what led you and your brothers to serve or was there something else? And then how did each of you choose the Navy, the Army and the Marines? Yeah, we, we did not plan it that way. And uh, I, you know, um, I, you know, it, I think a lot of it, yeah, sure, the, the, the heritage I'm sure contributed quite a bit, but um, we're also kind of like adrenaline junkies, you know, like uh, Jeremy had this, uh, I remember this beater Honda and he totaled it four times over in a parking lot. <laughs> you know, like, and, uh, so, I, mean, I, I don't know how you do that. You know, only Jeremy can, but he ended up, you know, getting into, once he made it through buds and he was in the steel teams as you're reading the book and he went to offensive driving school, rally racing. And, uh, but I mean, there's times when we were kids, I was like, just sitting in the passenger seat of this Honda, I was like, today's the day. This is it. Um, <laughs> uh, but Did you have to grab you know, the old crap? Is the old crap handle? <laughs> no, no, I, I think I broke that sucker off. <laughs> I think it came loose at one point in time. But, um, you know, we were always kind of up to shenanigans like that. And everything was kind of, it, there was the thrill-seeking aspect of it. But, you know, the patriotic sentiment and the heritage as well. So a little bit of everything, I think. Awesome, awesome. Uh, so, Tom, uh, you have written about military heroes before, including the Medal of Honor recipient Flo Groberg, who was also an awesome guest on Chief Chat. So we had a good, good time uh, talking to him. Uh, what called you to share Jeremy Ben and Bo's story? Well, thank you, Chief, and thank you for your service as well. Uh, it's really great to be here. Um, yes, that's true. I, I have had the honor of writing about for almost a decade now. Uh, been writing columns and now books about service members, veterans, and their families, specifically Gold Star families. And uh, when I came across the Wise family story, I believe it was around 2014 when an article came out in the Washington Post is when I first realized uh, what this family had sacrificed. Um, I was working on another book at the time called Brothers Forever, which um, in a sad irony, is also about two fallen heroes who are buried side by side. And, uh, you know, at the time, I, I didn't, I wasn't able to follow up, and, uh, but I always wanted to and, and kind of filed it away. And uh, it was several years later that I realized uh, I had written about a fallen hero named uh, U.S. Army Staff Sergeant Jesse Williams and had stayed in touch with his widow, Sonia. Um, as it turned out, um, uh, Jesse served with Ben Wise, uh, the middle brother Ben, in Iraq in 0304. And when I realized Sonia knew Ben's widow, Tracy, I asked her if she wouldn't mind putting us in touch and had the honor of speaking with Tracy. It was such a huge part of this book from beginning to end. And then she put me in touch with Bo. And, and I just wanted to help Bo tell this story so more Americans, not just inside the military community, but in the rest of the 99% um, can realize what kind of sacrifices have been made over the last 20 years, almost 20 years. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Man. It's, uh, it, it's definitely a story that, that uh, I got, like I kind of said in the intro, it's, uh, you know, people kind of lose sight of, well, I don't, I don't think people lose sight of it, but uh, it's just a reminder of what 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 we are called to do when we put this uniform on. And so uh, thank you for that reminder. So, Bo, what are you hoping that readers take away and learn the most about your brothers and their selfless sacrifice? 
Uh, in regards to Jeremy and Ben, um, you know, as uh, as Tom mentioned, the story came out in the Washington Post. Nine Shapiro did a great job. Um, but there was a lot of things that, that I wanted to expand upon. So when Tom came to uh, Oklahoma City and, and we sat down for the first time and everything, like he said, just kind of came together. One of the things that I told him, and, and uh, I, I think we just clicked right off the bat, was I want to focus on the preservation of life. That not only do they die saving lives, but they, they live and they embody the warrior ethos and, and draw attention to that. And it's just a testament to the character of men that they were professional, professional soldiers, professional warriors. And Tom, can you share a little more about how Three Wise Men came together? Um, how did you help Bo tell this story? What was that process like? Um, how long did it take? Can you share that? Sure, of course. Absolutely, Leah. Um, it took uh, over two years from beginning to end. Uh, there was, as you can imagine, a tremendous amount of research um, dealing with, you know, the lives and legacies of two fallen heroes and, and you're obviously all connected very closely with the military community. So you know mm -hmm. how many lives each service member will touch, especially when they've been deploying around the world. Um, it was more than 1600 combined days in combat between Jeremy Ben and Bo. So uh, we started at the beginning. I asked Bo, you know, have you put anything down on paper over the years? And, uh, and he had, he had, he had kept some journals and uh, that kind of helped us get started on our book proposal and then ended up in the finished book as well. Um, so we just tried to start there and then go in chronological order from when they were little kids in, in Arkansas and, and showing the bond that all three brothers had with each other. And then, you know, when Ben first joined the military was actually right before 9-11. And then he went into the um, infantry and went to Iraq, as I mentioned, in 03, 04. And then all the way through, you know, when uh, Jeremy started deploying as a SEAL and later a CIA contractor, and then of course, Bo in the Marine Corps. So we tried to speak with everyone who was willing to talk with us throughout the process about their memories of, of not only what happened on the deployments, but of Jeremy and Ben themselves. And uh, we're just so grateful to the all the SEALs, Green Berets, soldiers, Bo's fellow Marines who stepped forward some were deployed actually at the time when I interviewed them and called me from uh, some of the world's most dangerous places. So just our sincere thanks to them because this book would not be anywhere near what it is today without their contributions. Awesome. So uh, Bo, in the book, you mentioned that uh, Jeremy and Ben were heroes who saved many lives during their 14 years of defending our great nation but you also point out that they saved your life too. Can you expand on this a little bit? Yeah, so um, at one point in time, as, as my active duty career was winding down, I was I was in a going through a pretty dark phase and I wasn't responding to grief well. I didn't even wanna hear the words, uh, you know, um, survivor's guilt or PTSD or things of that nature and, um, you know, I wasn't acknowledging that, you know, any problems existed, you know, I, you know, you know how it is chief. I mean, no one wants to be the guy to drop out of the hike. No one wants to be the guy to drop their pack and, uh, and show any signs of weakness. So talking about, you know, pain is part of that cultural stigma. And I think, uh, one of the reasons that we're, we're having problems in the military, most specifically the Marine Corps is Marines don't like talking about pain. Right. So, not talking to my wife, you know, shutting people out, one family member after the other. And really the only, and it, it was a blessing that I was able to stay in the Marine Corps because being surrounded by Marines, that was really the only community that I could talk to, you know, I, you know, and it was just a select few people. Um, but, you know, taking it home and, you know, letting it out you know, on the kitchen table or whatever, that you know, never happened. So, um, but, you know, I, and there was one, one moment where the contemplation was you know, pretty high. And one of the things that I, I've just kind of reminded myself uh, in that moment, and I've been trying to remind myself every day since, is, you know, with Jeremy, the way everything happened, it was, um, I was in Afghanistan at the opposite end of the country, basically 
pretty close in enough anyway. And we didn't know anything about it until it was all over. And it was just like, hey, bad news, he's gone. With Ben, it was the exact opposite. We were told that he was wounded. Uh, we didn't know the severity of his wounds. We started you know, making plans to get to Germany to meet him there and got the news incrementally because his guys were still in the fight. There was no after action report or anything like that. So we didn't know until really, we didn't know like 100% until uh, I think we either we were in Amsterdam or Germany or wherever it was until we got on the ground and we actually saw him and met him and see how severe it was. But despite everything that he went through, you know, taking uh, eight to 10 AK rounds point blank, he fought for six days. You know, 10 rounds to the chest, legs, and groin, and the amputation rubbed to the hip. And he was still fighting for every impossible breath. And I've just reminded myself of that. And I uh, thought about everything that they taught me as far as, you know, my mentors, my father, my brothers, being my mentors over the years, and helping me to grow. And, and the Marine Corps helped me to grow. The Marine Corps was you know, very necessary. Uh, you know, we I, I, something about us we is is crazy as we are, we crave discipline. And I, I found myself in the Marine Corps and it helped me to grow up. And, and Jeremy and Ben did as well. And I just reminded myself, if Ben can fight, then I can fight and I'll keep fighting. Yeah, no, I, I admire your strength and, and uh, you know, sharing that story because like you said, that this, you know, I'm, it, we're taught to not say or, or express weakness. They call right. it weakness and it, and, it, and it's not weakness. It's uh, their strength and being able to, acknowledge that something's going on and, and, and you're trying to get help. And so I'm sure this book was a, probably a little therapeutic for you as well, uh, oh, yeah. you know, being able to share share and, and get those emotions out. So, man, we, we I admire your strength and, and your perseverance over, you know, this process because it, it, it's still a process, uh, obviously. But uh, thank you for that. Thank you, G. Thank you. Bow Three Wise Men is a story of healing as well. Can you share with us how your story can help veterans and Gold Star families who are hurting? Oh, you know, uh, steel sharp and steel. And I would just, you know, encourage you to get your veterans to talk. And as far as these Gold Star families, you know, there's no, I don't think there's any um, magical solution, you know, as far as dealing with grief. And uh, we learned that the hard way um, that, you know, everyone grieves differently. Um, but, you know, sharing the stories and reaching out and talking, but I would also say, you know, I learned from Ben's example. I didn't respond to grief very well. And I've, you know, said that before, and I'm not proud of it, the way that I responded to grief, but the way that I did respond is, is, is how, you know, uh, Tom and I wrote it and it's honest. Uh, the way that Ben responded to grief was diving into his faith and, you know, protecting his soul and I would you know encourage uh, family members uh, service members gold star family members you know just to do the same thing just um, you know whatever your faith may be well I'm, gl I'm glad to see that you know you made it through those tough times and, and have come out on the other side so can you share how you and your family are doing now uh, one day at a time, <laughs> one day at a time. Um, my mom is, is a rock and I, I, you know, we've just, she's been kind of an example to all of us as far as, um, just in her strength. Um, you know, my, my sister and I, we, uh, um, you know, we just kind of, I dive into my family, my family and, and my faith are my therapy. And, uh, so for me, my, my uh, my, therapist are collectively five years old, two and three. And you know, my therapy is on the living room floor, you know what I mean? So, um, but we're, you know, we're, we're doing a lot better now. It's, it's, like I said, there's no magical solution. It's just one day at a time. Our, our thoughts and our hearts are definitely with you guys. Um, so I want to pause for a moment to share some feedback from the live feed. Um, so we, Bo and Tom, as you know, we have service members and military families who are tuning in and watching from all over the world. Um, <clears throat> Chief, from your page, we have Amanda May, who is saying hello from JBSA Lackland. 
And then on the exchange page, we have several people just tuning in and saying, thank you for your service. Um, thank you to your family. And thanks for telling this story. Uh, Scott Finkelson says, I'm getting this book. Um, and then Chief Sergeant Major Henry, uh, she's tuning in from Europe. But so she says to you, really, Chief uh, Mar Hollywood Marine? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a thing. The, the folks in Paris Island call us Hollywood Marines because uh, we went to California and, and, and they, they brag about their sand fleas while we brag about the mountains that we had to climb. So it, it, it's a little internal. Uh, Jousting the little, little, little match we have with the Marine Corps. She just commented yeah. again and she says, This will be added to my collection. You are courageous. Thank you for sharing your story. I pray God will continue to grant everything needed to sustain you all daily. Thank you, Sergeant Major. So Sorry. Chief, no, for the record, I never bragged about sand fleas. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what, 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 I'm sure you know the story. I'm sure. I'm sure that's. I heard that's, it. That's the that's the whole claim to fame from the Paris Island Marines is we had we had to do a sample. Like really? That's, that's it. That's all you. I got. always just said. I always just said we had discipline. You know. Okay. <laughs> there you go. But as a reminder to our viewers, Three Wise Men is available at shopmyexchange.com. Tom, can you remind our viewers where they can go to learn more about the book? Yes, absolutely. And thank you to all service members watching. I appreciate your service. I'm a civilian and I'm in awe of what you do on a daily basis. Uh, obviously, I urge um, uh, everyone to shop at the exchange uh, for the book. Um, if you want to learn more information, uh, I would suggest actually going to the Three Wise Men Facebook page. Uh, we've been running that for honestly uh, more than a year since the book even came out. And there's some wonderful pictures and stories and links to other interviews. Uh, one interview I think your viewers would really, really appreciate was one that Bo and I had a chance to do with Medal of Honor recipient Kyle Carpenter, uh, a Marine, a retired Marine now. Uh, I think everyone would really enjoy that. And that's linked on our Facebook page as well. Awesome. Yeah, we'll definitely have to check that one out. Um, and so, you know, you know, before we wrap it up, just want to say thank you to to Bo for, you know, sharing the story and thank you for your service as well. Um, and and thank Tom, you. thank you for illustrating the story in, in a way that's, you know, that's going to hit home with, with everybody that's reading it. So uh, thank you both uh, for, for what you do for this great nation. Hey, thank you, Chief. Thank you, guys. Thank so you, Chief. Thank you for your service. And thank you, Julie and Leah as well. Thank you. Thank it's you. an important. It's an important read, and it should be on every American's bookshelf. As far as I'm concerned, it's it's a, mm -hmm. it's truly truly an important read. Yes. So, you so uh, with that said, you know, you, Bo, your family's given so much to our nation. Uh, so there are no uh, words to express our sorrow and our gratitude. Um, so thank you for sharing three wise men with us. And so Jeremy and Ben are are in our hearts uh, today. But thank you so much for being on Chief Chat. Uh, you guys were amazing guests. And uh, we, we look forward to, uh, I look forward to, to reading the book. Such an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Thank you. Bye, guys. Keep chat out. Yeah.